You want funny? Funny? You, you, you want, want funny? funny? You want funny? funny. You, you want funny? You want funny? Yeah. On today's Muddy and Funny. We shaved our main coon cat. The dog laughed, then all hell broke loose in our house. True friends stab you in the front. A quote by Oscar Wilde. My family always has pets. We have them in pairs. At least two, sometimes more. Why two at a time? The pets keep each other company when they are alone. Everyone in our household went to work or school at least five days a week. One set of pets was our 22-pound Maine Coon Ranger and our 16-pound Shizu, Reno. Ranger was my husband's cat. Reno was my dog. We often teased each other about our pet's sizes. Ranger was a big cat. After all, he was a Maine Coon, one of the largest cat breeds. But Reno was supposed to be a small Shizu. We got him at a discount from a show breeder because he was a runt, six to eight pounds at the most. Instead, we ended up with a 16-pound Shizu. He was an oxymoron, a giant Shizu, like a giant jumbo shrimp. Our pets were always with us when we were home, Ranger with my spouse and Reno following me around all day. We would kid each other that we needed our supervisor's permission when we wanted to leave the house on weekends. We were both not home. The two pets hung out in the same room. If either of us were home alone, then things changed. When I was home alone, Ranger was nowhere to be seen. But Reno was with me wherever I went. When my spouse was home, Reno was hanging out with him and Ranger. Reno was a love-the-one-you-are-with sort of dog. He was a food hound. So if you had treats, you were his friend. And my spouse had treats. My spouse would allow Ranger to roam the woods at the back of our home. The cat would come when he called him. One day, the cat returned with what appeared to be tar tangled into his fur. Off to the vet we went. The vet kept him overnight to ensure there was nothing toxic in the sticky black stuff. The next day, they sedated Ranger and they shaved most of his fur off. They cleaned his head and his boots and most of his tail. The groomer called it a lion cut. The cat looked damn funny. When I saw Ranger, I burst out laughing. Ranger did not like my reaction. He drooled and yelled loudly as the veterinarian team loaded him in his carrier. When I got home, I let the cat out of his carrier at the front door. He ran off to the basement. When my husband came home, Reno, like always, lay in the foyer in the front of the door to greet him. As I walked to the door, the dog was by my side. When the dog saw the cat, he got excited and started hopping around. He had the biggest doggy grin on his face. We think he was laughing at the cat. The cat jumped up and ran over to the dog. The fuzz on his back stood straight up, and he leaped over my six-foot spouse's head to the top of the curtain rod, something we had never seen before. Ranger was making the growling noises that Maine Coons make when upset. I picked up the dog and left the room. The dog kept laughing, his tongue lolling out of his mouth. Later that evening, I was watching cable with the dog at my feet. I didn't know where my husband was. I saw the cat slinking along the walls. When he got to the couch, the cat suddenly ran forward and hit the dog five times fast with his paw. Bap! Bap! Bap, bap, bap. Then the cat took off running with the dog chasing him through our home with me calling the dog back to me. The dog came back to me with his tongue hanging out. He was still smiling. I called my spouse and asked him what was wrong with the cat. The cat and the dog got along well. Range was less than a year old when we got the puppy Reno. We seldom observed this level of conflict. Later that night, I went out to grab some pizza. When I returned, I asked my spouse if he wanted to share the pizza with me upstairs. The cat and the dog came to the door. The dog grinned at the cat again. How do I know it was a laugh? The dog walked up to the cat, 
pressed his nose against the bare skin on the cat's ribs and let out a small woof, followed by a doggy smile. The cat had been watching too many boxing matches. He reached out and smacked the dog in the face three times before he could move. He then took off, running up the stairs with the dog following. As the dog hit the landing, the cat turned around and jumped back over the dog, heading back down the stairs, smacking the shizu yet again. The crazy dog continued up the stairs, then turned around looking confused like he was in a cartoon. I could see him thinking, where did he go? Because Ranger was nowhere to be seen. Understand, these two packs worked together when it was to their mutual benefit. The dog stole food and shared it with the cat. The cat pushed treats off the counter for the dog. The final straw was when I came home from work the next day. I had a thirsty and hungry dog. The dog's water and food bowls were woefully turned over. The floor was bone dry. The water had either dried up or was licked up. There was no food to be found on the floor. Had the dog eaten all the food in the bowl? Nope. I think the cat turned the dog's water over and ate as much of the Reno's dog food as he could stuff in. I gave the dog fresh food and water. That night, when the cat walked into the room, the dog did not laugh at him. Instead, Reno sat quietly and watched the cat settle down near my spouse. I don't know exactly what happened at my house that day. There was no mess, other than the dog's food and water bowl, but the cat and dog came to an understanding about the cat's strange haircut. My spouse and I exchanged looks and mouth, damn pets, to each other. We grinned and shook our heads. We picked the boys up and put them in our laps giving them the love they deserve for making the truth. Thank goodness, because once you are a pet, you have a forever home. We did not need a Hatfield and McCoy-style household. Who knew cats cared so much about their appearance? Thanks for listening. Click below. Like. Subscribe. Muddy and Funnyum, co-produced by Nancy Arvizu and Gary Chapin. Now that was fun.